Hello guys, welcome back to the Fulch Engineer YouTube channel. Today we are diving into the world of non-inverting amplifiers. This is the most famous application of the op-amp. Every hardware engineer has encountered this amplifier in his life. Well, let's start. Alright, picture this, we have a shunt based current sensor, which can give just one volt output and its signal strength is very weak, barely making a peep. Output voltage of this shunt resistor varies from minus one volt to one volt only. Negative voltage value denotes that the current is flowing away and positive shows that the current is flowing in the system. Now we want to give this signal to an ADC which doesn't understand the language of small signals. So we need an amplifier in between which can amplify a signal of 1 volt to 10 volts. Nothing less, nothing more. I mean the ADC wants what it wants, right? And the frequency of the signal is 20 kilohertz. And that's where we use non-inverting amplifier. Its input impedance is very high. That means even if there is a very weak signal, this amplifier doesn't load it much. It just takes a very tiny amount of current. The input impedance of this amplifier is usually in the range of giga ohms. Now before selecting an op amp, we should make sure that the open loop gain of this op amp is higher than the signal input frequency. Large signal performance may be limited by sleeve rate. So we need to check the maximum output swing versus frequency plot in the datasheet to minimize the sleeve rate induced distortion. Uh, well, let's make this simpler. We saw the input ranges from minus 1 volts to 1 volt, which includes 100 millivolt signals also. The frequency of this signal is 20 kilohertz. Our goal is to amplify it up to plus or minus 10 volts with the same frequency. So let's see how the circuit would be. This is what a non-inverting amplifier looks like. I'm using op-amp OPA171 from TI as an example. It needs negative feedback. That means we give some chunk of output signal to the inverting terminal of the op-amp through a resistor. And we provide our input signal to the non-inverting terminal. The inverting terminal where we are providing the feedback to is grounded. Let's start with the design of this amplifier. First, we'll start with the gain calculations. From this formula, we can calculate the required gain as 10 volts per volts. Now we'll calculate the values of R1 and R2. We have two variables and just one equation to finalize these values. So we have to assume one resistor value. Let's start with R1. The value of this resistor should be selected considering the output impedance of the signal source. For now, we'll choose R1 as 9.09 kilo ohms. And from this equation, we can calculate R2 as 1.01 kilo ohms. Now, we need to calculate the minimum sleeve rate required for this application. It's like checking if our amplifier can keep up with the pace which can be calculated with this formula where VP is 10 volts which is maximum output voltage and frequency is 20 kilohertz. So this will be 1.257 volt per microsecond. Luckily for us, this op amp has a sleeve rate of 1.5 volts per microsecond which is more than enough for our needs. So this op-amp can handle this sleeve rate. Now let's find out if our amplifier can handle that 20 kilo signal or not. We consider the non-inverting gain and the gain bandwidth product of the op-amp for this calculation. We already know what is the non-inverting gain and gain bandwidth product is mentioned in the op-amp datasheet. From these parameters, we can calculate the bandwidth of the op-amp for this application. Which is 
300 kilohertz. So it has sufficiently large bandwidth, which can handle 20 kilohertz signals. Now, last but not least, to avoid stability issues, we have to see if the zero set by these passive components like gain setting resistors and input capacitance of the op amp is greater than the bandwidth of the circuit, which can be calculated with this formula. And this value is 29.18 megahertz, which is greater than 300 kilohertz. These capacitors are common mode and differential input capacitance of the OPA171. These values can be obtained in the data sheet. Now we'll see the simulation of the circuit. I'm using Tina Kia software to showcase the simulation. This is the OPA171, the, the R1 and R2. The circuit is the same as we calculated. Our input voltage is a sine wave with one volt pick to pick. And the output voltage swings beautifully between minus 10 volts to 10 volts. And its phase margin is same. Well, we can design this amplifier for just DC signals as well, where we don't need to do any bandwidth and frequency related calculations because we'll be dealing with zero frequency signals. Also, we can use only positive supply and ground the VE pin of the op amp. It is the most used non-inverting amplifier application in the electronics world. Please just make sure of the input and supply condition of the op amp. And that's wrap. I hope you picked up something useful from this. The reference of this design is added in the description below. While checking the reference, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's right over there. I'll see you next time. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.